Welcome back to Washoe, Nevada for episode 11 with me, Mr. Seely P. So here I am quite happily ploughing out a new section of field up by 11 A, B, whatever I decided to call it. Um, and my field's ready to harvest, so we need to get right on that. This cultivated plough is still leased, it's the modded one. I am going to do some more tree clearance today because I think I've got a lot of trees around the edges of fields which is going to make hiring workers a little bit tricky plus I didn't do as much over on our new field, field 16 as I wanted to and with recent new vehicles becoming available that is going to be absolutely perfect what I'm going to do is just pause to one side because once this field's harvested I am going to then just cult to plough the gap between the two because I did leave a small gap so that all just becomes one big field let's just stop that there Let's go and get the harvester and get that going. Actually, field 9 might be ready as well down the bottom of the hill. But like I say, I, I did enough to get the field going. And I did the edges myself the first time. But I've got a few trees that are quite close. You know, often when you set off a worker, they get a little bit twitchy, don't they, when they get near trees and they often turn around. So I might just come around and remove some of these. But, uh, yeah, all good. I do have the uh, case optimum over on field 5, which is just that way, uh, doing a cultiva uh, cultivating job. It only pays about 3 grand, but it's 3 grand. Oh, I still like this. When I left the door open, didn't I? Oh, well. Hang on a minute. Oh, <laughs> suddenly thought our header and header trailer's gone. It's the other side of the truck. <laughs> I couldn't work out what happened. Oh, that's all I'd need stuff vanishing on me let's get some harvesting done might as well start down here then I'll head up there then we'll whisk the store, lease some equipment and get some more jobs done actually mm. Fantastic, right. Should be able to get some more money in the bank. Now after I did the silage episode, uh, the last one I did, I had a couple of comments. People leaving saying, I know it's going to sound really ungrateful, but and I, I get it when people are kind of, I've been playing the game quite a while now, and um, people saying, you are aware you can just buy TMR, you are aware you can... I am, and I'm also aware I can buy grass and I can do all these other things. But the whole point is I'm making it myself. That's was the point. Um, I could I could just go and buy TMR, absolutely, yeah, no problem at all. I could go and buy silage, but especially with the uh, the kind of buy anything silos which are out now, yeah, you can do. But where's the fun in that? That's where the farming comes in. At least for the first load. I mean, you know, once I get the cows up and running, I get them going. That's the point, isn't it? But you know, I don't you know. Don't get me wrong. I do appreciate the comments. I really do. <laughs> I just you know, I am aware. Thank you for. Cruise control one. It's not a big field, this is one of the other ones I'm going to have a go at ploughing out a little bit. So I think I might need to remove a few trees around this as well. This is weird, I'm puzzled why I can't seem to get workers to work properly on all the fields. Maybe it's just me, but... I've had a few issues Ooh, through the trees. Let's try again. There we go. We're off. Cool. Right. So, 
Let's go to the store while that's working. That will then move up to the other field and the other field. and Whatever we get, we'll sell and get a bit of money in the bank. Let's go and get some equipment. Now, I am seriously considering, actually, whether or not to change my cedar. Because that new Great Plains one came out. The smaller version of the YP2425. Is it the YP4025? I like it. The planter. I've got a 9 metre at the moment. And it's a 12. Yeah, the YP4025A. And this is a cool bit of kit. The Great Plains one, they do multi-crops as well, which is absolutely awesome for, for planting. Um... 5,800 litres, 8.2 metres, the new one, the modded one, and it needs 250 horsepower, it's a 12 metre, which is pretty cool, it does all the crops in it, does seed and fertilise at the same time, which is also very cool. Downside to moving to that from the um, uh, the horse uh, Pronto is that the horse Pronto is a direct drill, and that's not, which was mean I'd have to cultivate not necessarily, it depends on what crop I've done. Um, but the good thing about this one as well is it has a trail hitch on the back, which means you can take a seed tender, a seed cart, a, a liquid fertiliser tank behind you for refilling in the field or oh, something else, whatever it might be. That's a really nice bit of kit, that, and I do like it. Only 102,000. Hmm, I'm just thinking, what would I get back for my. What would I get back for the Pronto if I did? Where is my Pronto? 74. I don't have to make up a little shortfall, but I do like the fact I can direct drill with the Pronto. I think I'm going to stick with the Pronto over time being. I could get that as well, just have two. One for planting, one for seeding. Uh, what was I here for? Oh, I remember now. Um, I am leasing the beast. Like I say, but new mods coming out recently. Why would I not? <laughs> This also gives me opportunity to talk about, or I mentioned it in the video I did about the mill loader. Oh, that's nice. It's a fantastic bit of kit. Now, it says install 200 horsepower, just up the top there, but then when you get it, I think it's 600. So it's a bit odd, I don't know why it's done that. Um, did I change the main colour? Should we go for Mr. Silly P Green? Or is that a bit too garish? You know what? No, I'm going for it. Why not? Uh, let's lease that. Now, I also said in the video that I did, on this, on the mod video, that the Xylor has lost the plough function, but I did mention the fact it's got a three-point link on the bit back and a trailer hitch and PTO and all that kind of stuff. What I missed, and in my defence, it doesn't actually say it. If I go along to the end here, right, it says, this machinery cuts tree stumps. Awesome. Uh, and in the mod hub, in the main store, on the Farming Simulator website, it doesn't mention this whatsoever, but there is a plough that goes with this. Uh, is it under subsoilers or ploughs? It might be under ploughs. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, the Tetra 4. Um, that's designed to go on the back, so you can plough with it as well. But that's only a 4 metre, so it kind of matches the header width. But with the new Lizard subsoiler 6M, which used to be the Weber 6M, um, which goes out to obviously six metres. This becomes a bit more of a versatile, versatile machine. There's a lot you can do with it. I think I'm going to stick with. Hmm. I think I'm just going to stick with cutting the trees at the moment because I've got the uh, the culture plough as well. But this is awesome. So uh, let's get down the side of the truck here. Oh, I'm stuck. There we go. Ooh. Very cool. No, the door opens, doesn't it? There we go. Let's open the door. Get some air in. It's very hot here in Nevada, so you know, I know a lot of these new vehicles have air con, but I'm a bit old fashioned like that. Roll down the windows, get some air flow through. Um, right, let's just tip that back, get some beacons on, stoops, it's all the traffic, say where's all the traffic, 
so I've got a bit of clearing to do. Um, now I could cut them down for lumber um, with that new mill loader. Wow, what a beast. Um, I think I'm probably going to do some logging at some point, not necessarily on this map. Um, but I think I'm going to use that. It's not cheap to lease, that's the problem though. So that, is it about 20 grand or something? It's expensive. But then if you're going to do logging, you're going to make that money back easily. Really easily using that. I like this. But like I say, I've, I've, it's only because I've already got the Colty plough um, that I haven't got the plough attachment on the back of this. And to be fair, I could probably just attach the Colty plough on the back of this and then use it as one kind of operation where I'm, I cut the trees down and then plough out what I need to so I don't have to have the tractor on it. Actually, let's have a quick check in the garage. Um, uh, least items. Yeah, it says 600 horsepower in there. So it's obviously a typo before. So this is going to have more than enough power to pull whatever you need it to. What I will do is move the harvester up to the next field to get that going. I think I did two of soy and one of canola, didn't I? Just working out if I've got enough room to get through my farm with that header on rather than taking the header trailer up with it as well. Uh, right, what do I need to clear? This ends alright. Down this side maybe a couple, to give myself a bit of room. Then over to field 16 and a little bit around our new fields as well. Yeah, maybe a couple of these. Mm, actually, no, I've got enough to on it. We'll see, let's just move the harvester first. Cool, right, I'm glad I finally got this field harvested. That's obviously going to need to be re-fertilised and then just get straight back on with reseeding. What would we get out of that? 8,000. It's only a small field and soybean is a low yield, high paying crop. Just working out. Can I fit through here? Or is this going to be one of those embarrassing clonking into everything? Oh, okay. Oh, I don't know. Bit of precision. I know you're on your... Uh, not used to seeing that from me, you know. <laughs> I am a bit of a crash and bash kind of thing. Nice, right. So what I'll do, I'm going to hire a worker across this edge and see if it has any issues with the trees there. It might not, but I'm just thinking just to give myself a little bit of space. It does mean I could extend this one a little bit further if I wanted to as well. So I didn't go particularly straight along the side of there. Then we'll unload into our trailer and I think, yeah, we'll head over, we'll get the canola done as well. Am I going to miss the edge there? Yeah, I need to straighten this field up a little bit, don't I? Oh no, it's running on there all right. Well, I could do the same along this edge, maybe extend this out a little bit. It'll give me a slightly unusual shaped field, but it does mean, I, mean, I could take out the sheep pen and move it. it. means moving Jeremy out and then redoing the feed again. But I could realistically join these two together and have one big field. Kind of around the cow pasture. Could do. The other thing that was commented on the other day was um, I don't need to lift the header up every time I turn a corner. No, I don't need to. In game you can just swerve around and do whatever you want. But I have done previous Let's Plays over the last three years or so where when I've done that people then comment and say or oh, in real life you wouldn't turn a corner without lifting the header up. <laughs> so you can't win whichever way you do it. Um, if I lift it, people tell me you don't need to. Um, if I don't lift it you should really lift it, so I'm like, you know, I'll just do it the way I do it. And... Right, okay, he's going. Let's get this tree stuff sorted out. I was just thinking on my way back down, actually, that at some point I need to do some diesel, but for, for my use, not necessarily to sell, uh, buy some diesel and put it here. It hasn't got to be a huge amount, because I'm going to need to refill my vehicles at some point. So... This thing is so much more efficient than it was uh, 
I mean, the only, I suppose, downside is that the Xylor on FS17, you could hook up to all sorts of different vehicles, and it had a quite a high reach if you put it on front loaders and JC. But I mean, that's actually, that's not too shabby, let's be honest. Um, so this one, you've got to buy the whole machine to come with it as well. But, like I said on, when I did the mod review, it could be a bit finicky and you have to kind of get stuff right in the middle. Or oh, not so anymore. That thing just heats through. I know a lot of people have been back on um, RDC. The, the map that had all the new, you know, the new crop types and all the new stuff you used to for animals and stuff like that. Um, and we're saying that because that map a lot of people like the idea the concepts but the map itself had way too many trees people are getting back on that and they are just getting rid of them with this thing it just makes such light work of it on the other side i need to do potentially I'm going to head over towards field 16, so I've definitely got something to do over there. Actually, this side's not too bad. I think maybe a couple here, just to give myself a bit of leeway. Oh. My, my property boundary does not go out that far. Maybe this one I can. Maybe it just, just literally goes to the edge there. Right, let's raise it up a little bit. Let's head over towards field 16. Now what I could do is clear a load of these trees out between fields, uh, or between the yard and field 10 as well. If I wanted to, but it's not like I'm going to put a, a field in the gap here or anything like that. And what I could do is put myself a track or a pathway kind of more directly past the farmhouse up here but this track already exists I'm not quite sure I could do I suppose I? well maybe I will I was thinking gives me a more direct route up doesn't it but up it is an evil grain tank awesome and there's obviously all these trees here as well no, I don't own this plot here. I don't think I do, do I? Let's have a quick check. I'm pretty sure I don't own this plot here. No, this bit I don't. I think I'd be pretty close to the mark, actually. What about the plot round field 10? What's that go for? That's got all that in it. 89 grand. Yeah, I could do it at some point. Increase my land portfolio. Why not? This isn't the fastest machine out there. I mean, if you were going across a massive map, or you, know, you might want to put it on a low loader or something like that. But for the time being, all good. So the sides of field 16 were right. I've got no grass growing yet here. Crops should be growing. No grass. What's happening? Did I miss a bit. I mean. Do I own this or not? Now, admittedly by doing this you are doing yourself out of logging so potentially all of this could be money in the bank if you cut these down um, and decided you were going to uh, sell them for lumber yeah that's money in the bank you know so it comes down to that choice if you're not a particular fan of logging per se but you do want to clear an area this is the way to go if you want to do the lumber and you want to make the money doing that then yeah your options are obviously much better if you uh, if you sell the lumber you're making money aren't you? I mean that's kind of one of those obvious statements <laughs> of course if you sell lumber you're going to make money that's 
what I want to do is extend this build out as well. Extend where I can. Uh, a bit finicky with this one. There we go. So as you can see, you can see where I'm going with this. Um, gives me the option to go down. I'm going to do some work on here as well. I think I can plow some of these bits out, which means I can extend the field out a bit further, and also be able to extend out to the side here. This is where I've got a lot more space down the side too. I can get rid of some of those trees around the side and just make this a much bigger grass field. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to crack on that. I'm going to go and check on the harvest for a second. Do. Thought what I better do is actually uh, I finished the contract I was doing cultivating. <laughs> so I suddenly left it over in the field. But I need the. Uh, the optum grab the trailer unload the harvest because that's full and so having a direct drill is great because it means you don't need to cultivate, but if you're going to do cultivating jobs, then you're going to need to cultivate. If you're going to take on contracts, you're going to need it. So, what I might do is have a go with that new Trex with the culture plow on the back of it. I might try that. So, as I'm clearing, I'm, I'm uh, clear, uh, preparing the ground to. I just forgot how to speak there for a moment. So what I need to do next is put in some crop. Oh no, I did say I was going to sell. Yeah, so I'm going to need straw, aren't I? Straw swaths. So whether I do oats, barley, or wheat. So I'm going to need some straw. So I'm going to need some straw swaths. So I think possibly just whacking the ground some crops of that type. Where am I going to put Jeremy if I move that? Oh, actually, yeah, hang on, I could move. Let's unload that. Stop the engine. Right, well, that's unloading. Because um, if I clear some of these trees, I could potentially get the sheep pen over here in this gap. How far does my property line... How far does my property line extend out here? Where am I? Up here. Uh, right. Just past where I am. Yeah, I probably could, couldn't I? Now I'm looking around the back here. Just thinking as well. Because I could take out more trees here and extend further out this side. I'm just thinking, if you know, the maximum land I can possibly get and use, why not? Take two or three of these out. I could definitely extend further out this way. Hmm. Just take it right out. Maximise my potential. So I really do want to get these cows on the go as quickly as possible. Well, I say as quickly as possible. We're a few episodes in, aren't we? Let's be honest. We'll get there. We will. My worker done a runner. Why is this not unloading? Okay. What? Well, that was a strange one. I just had to move it around a little bit and all of a sudden found a sweet spot and off it went. I don't know why I was doing that. A bit 
finicky. It's working now. Odd. Very odd indeed. Okay, right. That away. Last is done. So I've got the Colty plough hooked to the back, I don't know why I've still got the big ones on those. Um, and it pulls it absolutely no problem at all. What I'm just thinking is as well, right, if you're going through like Wilhelmina Forest or, you know, Grizzly Mountain or any of the ones, any of the forested areas where you've got to cut, cut your way through, having one of these on the back gives you a nice widespread. Now obviously it depends how close the trees are because you're going to kind of cut the trees as you go with the front of this. And you're going to make yourself a nice kind of roadway through, which you can then come over the top of and... Uh, landscape and put another texture on but this thing works absolutely brilliant made a bit of a mistake by the thing here but that's not a problem <laughs> right down next to the track Very, very useful bit of kit. Mm. 
I mean, you can you can see the applications available for this thing now. How cool is that? <laughs> I like this a lot. Like it. There's been some really good mods out recently, I tell you. It's got loads of power as well. It's, it's pulling this, and sometimes when you have bits of machinery and they get a bit sluggish and a bit slow. I mean, 600 horsepower is no slouch and a track vehicle, but it just it doesn't even feel there's anything on the back. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Love it, absolutely love it. Right, I've got more trees to cut down. I must have. Just want to keep using it.
it's just cost me a few quid in landscaping. But what I have done is had a lot of the rock quarried out. So I've quarried the rock out. This area behind me is now cleared. So what we're going to do is extend out. Drop that back down again. Got two more trees to take out. Now, if what Jim told me is correct, because this is a texture, I should just be able to cultivate over the top of that. Absolutely spot on. So. Looking good. Come back around the mid, take that tree out. Nicely done. Might do a little bit more smoothing here and there, but for the most part, that's looking pretty good. Let's turn that on. This is what I originally intended. When I did the episode when I was talking about this and I made it a bit bigger and I said there's a few trees that need to go and I was thinking, you know, I've got to cut them down, I've got to remove them, you know. This mod coming out couldn't have come at a better time. Uh, Jim messaged me after that episode and said, oh, you can just flatten that out, you can cultivate or plough over the top of it um, because it's a texture, not actual rock. Um, so it all kind of worked out in my favour. So what I'll do is join all this up now and we've made this feel way, way bigger. I'm going to have to come back in and fertilise and then put grass down on all the bits I've just done. But it does give us way more, um, way more land for making grass, making hay, hay bales, whatever I need to be doing, for making total mixed ration, for feeding the animals than I had before. Or I could use another field for doing that and I could use this for putting a crop in. So, you know, either way around, at the moment it's got grass in it, but there's absolutely no reason at all why, having made it this big, I couldn't convert some of the other fields to grass for hay production after the first year when I've got enough on hand. And then um, use this one primarily for a crop field rather than for grass. So I'm going to have to come back in again though. Because that's a mess around that rock. Might, actually what I might do is landscape around that a little bit put the edge back in again I think so I've gone a little bit too close that one I couldn't get to flatten straight away this would allow me so I might do a little bit of tidy up but yeah it's all looking good canola harvest is happening now over on our other fields, up by where the animal pens go. Clearing the land. That's what we're doing. Awesome. Okay then, field 16 is good to go. You can just see over in the background there, the Trex is working around the field. I've cleared some trees from this side. I've cleared some down the side of the other field, just across there where the uh, canola was. We've got about 12,500 litres of canola in the harvester. You might just be able to see it just through past the cow shed there. Um, I'm intending to extend all these out a little bit, maybe put some more tracks in. Now obviously doing that landscaping put a big dent in our funds. Um, say a big dent, not a massive dent. We've got 19,000 litres of soybean here 
and um, I'm pretty sure Sky Peak Restaurant is paying the most, so we're going to head to Sky Peak to sell them. I don't think. Hang on, let's have, just have a double check. Have we got any others? Well, it's actually that's all. Total no soybean. We've got 51 liters in there. Um, so we're going to take it off there and sell that. Then we'll come back. We'll get the canola. We'll take it and sell that. I have extended field nine with the coal to power, but a strip either side, so I've widened it a little bit. I've put half a strip the other end. I haven't done anything this end because I needed to leave, leave room for the harvester and stuff to turn around. We are pretty close to the silo to the left, but again, there's plenty of room, even if I have to back in from the other side, but I can get smaller vehicles around and, and things like that. That's all good. So yeah, extended out this side as well, making the most of the space we've got available. So let's see what we get for this. I think this is going for 1.6. 1.6 something, I'm sure it's 1.6 something. Off screen, I think what I'll do then is prep the fields, get them fertilised. The new bits are going to need um, liming, I think. Uh, they have been cold to plowed, so they won't need ploughing or anything like that. Uh, and then I'm not sure what crops to put in them next, but I'll look at what crops are going to go in. But I'll buy the animal pastures, I'm going to look at then extending that field out, getting some more trees down, maybe moving the sheep pen. Um, I'll probably pick up some more contracting jobs. Maybe I'll, I'll try and pick up another contract job that pays out quite well to help fund all this expansion because at the moment we're uh, extending fields but not actually reaping the reward of that yet. Well, we are now. This should pay out quite nicely. But then that said, we leased the treks and we're going to get clobbered, I think, very soon for another hour on the culture plough. So this is basically just going to recoup what we've spent out but you've got to speculate to accumulate the money we're paying out is going to expand everything out the next harvest we do um we're going to have bigger fields therefore more product coming off them and that's the whole point isn't it let's see how much this slows down up the slope here not too badly I always go to the left, I don't know why. So I thought I'd go to the right. Let's change things up a bit. Let's go mad. It's already ten past three today. The day is flying by. Let's see what we make. Thirty-one grand. That's not bad. Now, we've started the episode on 111,000. So even landscaping fees, leasing the treks, um, you know, all that stuff, we're already up on where we were, so that's great. And we've got the canola still to sell. Brilliant. I think at this point is probably a good point to end today's episode, I think. More to do, more to come, as you would expect. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. And if you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.